So this video is about left atrial spontaneous echocontrast seen in patients with severe mitral stenosis and atrial fibrillation. So this is a case of severe mitral stenosis, borderline aortic valve disease and severe pulmonary artery hypertension who is undergoing mitral valve replacement and on transesophageal echo you will see swelling of blood within the left atrium and severe mitral stenosis with borderline aortic valve disease. So this swelling of blood is said to be because of aggregation of red cells. There is increased fibrinogen in patients with LASIK. Fibrinogen being positively charged tends to bind negatively charged red cells and these droplets tend to reflect ultrasonically as swelling of blood within the left atrium. So these red cell aggregates tend to reflect ultrasonically on transesophageal or transthoracic echo and is called as left atrial spontaneous echo contrast. The other requirement for this to happen, for this blood to swirl within the left atrium is low velocities of blood flow within the left atrium as you can see in mitral stenosis. You will never see or not see left atrial spontaneous echo contrast in severe mitral regurgitation because the velocity of blood flow is quite high. And if you see left atrial spontaneous echo contrast in severe mitral regurgitation, then it is a case of severe MR with very poor LV. So this LASIK usually starts in the left atrial appendage. Here you can't see it and tends to worsen or grow within the left atrium and is graded either as mild, moderate, severe or the recent classification of FATKIN at all, which will grade it from 0 to 4, 4 being the severe form of LASIK. Now this, this left atrial spontaneous echo contrast is a precursor for embolization and cerebrovascular accidents and uh, as said before is classically seen in atrial fibrillation but can also be seen in normal sinus rhythm in which case the heart would be a failing heart. And uh, this phenomenon cannot be treated with antiplatelets or anticoagulants. One has to change the velocity of blood flow within the left atrium which means you have to either replace the valve, mitral valve or repair the mitral valve, allow the LA to contract and let the blood flow into the LV in a phased manner and that is the only treatment for left atrial spontaneous echo contrast. You can also see this in the left ventricle in which case the LV will be failing or will be very poor and the treatment as I said is allowing the flow velocities to increase. As per Richo's triad, you need to have change in the blood, change in the flow and change in vessel wall for thrombosis to happen. But here in this case, in the setting of mitral stenosis, change in vessel wall is not something which we see or probably may happen after mitral valve replacement. But this predisposition to embolization and several accidents is something that has to be kept in mind. Now after valve replacement, as you can see here with bioprosthetic mitral valve, there is still some amount of swirling of blood within the left atrium because the valve ventricle is yet to contract. Now you will see shortly as the ventricle starts contracting, the left atrium tends to empty its blood freely into the left ventricle and you will not be seeing that swirling of blood that you saw before the case was operated upon. You can see the left atrial appendage also being free and uh, as the ventricle gains its contractility, you see the left atrium tended to have a very good blood flow, absence of swirling. So this is basically a bit about left atrial spontaneous echo contrast. And the next slide will show you some details about the statistics about what will happen when there is left atrial spontaneous echo contrast in the presence of atrial fibrillation or in the presence of normal sinus rhythm, etc. Thanks for watching.